Hello everyone, welcome to a, another Friday new product post. We have a bunch of new products to talk about here at Sparkfin Electronics. Let's see what we've got for this week. First up, we've got two new LED driver ICs. These are bar or graph driver LEDs that are made specifically for driving like bar graphs or multiple LEDs. We have them in two types. We have a VU taper and also a linear taper. These are pretty interesting in that they can control 10 LEDs and instead of doing complicated code and figuring out how to arrange everything, you just feed it an analog signal, it takes that analog signal, splits it up into 10 different discrete LEDs, drives those LEDs, and you get a really simple way to drive a bar graph. Here is a breadboard that we have set up. We have four of the LM3916s, and as you can see, we have a nice little VU meter of my voice. We have this plugged back into our camera, so we're just using the monitor out from the camera into this. And you can see we have no op amp, no other driver circuit here. We just have the analog input directly from the camera into the four ICs. We just have a couple of resistors and some wiring here, but generally speaking, all we're doing is taking the analog input into the four ICs, and then they're connected directly to the LED bar graphs, and we get this nice little range here. We have two trim pots that are attenuating the low end as well as the high end so we can uh, make it a little bit softer or we can make it clip a little bit quicker. So they're pretty easy to use and we do have a full quick start guide on how to use these both in a daisy chain configuration as well as individually. They also have another mode which is called the dot mode which would just display one single LED. So it'd be kind of like a peak meter so it would only show one LED at a time and it would just show the current peak. This is the VU or logarithmic scale as you see here for audio. It works best for audio. Um, the linear scale would be a lot different and it wouldn't be um, for audio. But if you're doing an application like a temperature sensor or something like that where you want to take the analog output directly from a temperature sensor into one of these directly into a single bar graph, you might want the linear instead, and you might even want the dot display instead too. These are pretty interesting. I definitely encourage you to check out the whole quick start guide to kind of wrap your head around how they work in different applications. But if you have an analog output and you want a nice, simple visual display for it, check out the LM3914 or the LM3916. Next up, we've got a few new products from Actobotics. We've got a couple different um, connectors. First up is this angle bracket. The angle bracket serves a very real need of wanting to connect the Actobotics channels at angles. It has a 1.5 inch hole pattern on both of these corners, connects directly to the channel like that, and allows you to do simple right angles with the channels or any of the other pieces that you want. You also might be wondering why we have lengths of PVC pipe here. Well, these next two products actually allow you to use Actobotics with PVC pipes. We have this guy, which is the one inch PVC clamp hub, and then this is the one inch PVC clamp mount. The difference between the hub and the mount is the hub actually has the 1.5 inch hole pattern here, where the clamp is just a clamp with a one and a half inch hole pattern down here on the bottom that mounts like that. This is PVC pipe just from Home Depot. These sections are two foot and these were like a buck 70 at Home Depot. So it's actually really cheap and it's, you know, really strong. This is one inch pipe and the one inch is actually the inner diameter of the pipe. So the outside is like 1.3 or something like that. This is made to go on the end of the pipe like this and it allows you to use PVC pipe as a structural element for whatever it is you're building. And then because of this 1.5 inch hole pattern, you can actually connect directly to the edge of your channel like that. The other nice thing that they figured out is the one inch PVC actually fits perfectly inside the channel like that. Next up is the other PVC clamp, which this is just a clamp mount. This fits around the pipe in much the same way and allows you to connect directly to the top or the outside of the channel like that. There's a couple different reasons why you might want to use this one instead of this one. Think of this one basically as like an end clamp where this one is kind of like a side clamp. But PVC is very inexpensive, very strong, easy to cut, easy to work with. So if you're looking to do a big structure, you might want to check out either of these pieces because it allows you to adapt PVC in with your Actobotic stuff. Let's talk about the difference between Flexnol and Muscle Wire. They're both made of the same material. They're both nitinol, which is an alloy of nickel and titanium that reacts to heat. 
The difference is in how they're pre-treated, and also in the percentages of nickel and titanium that are in each. By tweaking those percentages, uh, companies like Dynaloy, who makes both of these alloys, can radically change the uh, properties of these materials. So flexanol is a material that shrinks when you apply heat to it, and that's all it does. Uh, you have a length of it when you apply a current to it to heat it up, or even heat it up with, say, uh, butane lighter, uh, it will actually shrink down to a shorter length. Whereas muscle wire doesn't come with any pre-trained action when it heats up. If you get a piece of muscle wire and you just heat it up without doing anything to it, it doesn't move or do anything at all. It's like heating up a piece of jumper wire. So what you need to do to that is to train it. In other words, to get it so hot that it actually remembers that state that it's in. And at that point, once you've shaped it, heated it way up, and then cooled it back down, it will try to get back into that shape when it's heated again. So it doesn't shrink directly uh, the same way Flexnol does. It actually deflects to either side like a coil um, and pulls itself together. The advantages of muscle wire or that that deflection causes there to be a lot of travel when it uh, actually activates. Whereas flexanol doesn't have very much travel because there's nowhere for the material to really go, but it's a lot stronger. It pulls with a lot more force than muscle wire. We'll start by connecting the muscle wire. What I'm going to do is just turn on the voltage source and this wire will heat up and you'll see this little muscle wire arm jump up and then I'll turn the power source off and you'll be able to see it'll come back down very slowly because the wire actually has to cool off in order to uh, stretch back out. Here I've connected the flexanol up to our bench supply and you can see we got a little bit of deflection there. It picked up the lever and it did it pretty quickly but it's not, it, it wasn't as much action as you got with the muscle wire. And again, it has to cool down before it'll drop the lever back down. And because this actuates at a slightly higher temperature, it takes it a little longer to cool down. 